Greek alcohol. Uh, uh, not both. I'm concerned. They'll go because they reject the only one who can forgive their sins. That's Jesus. But what's even sadder is this, church. The Bible says that that one, that many, many that are sitting under the sound of preaching. Sitting under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Sitting in God's house and saying that they know the Lord. There's going to be many of those. Many that are going to hear, I never knew you. Depart from me. Cast them into outer darkness where I never knew them. Bind them hand and foot. I never knew them. You know, it's a sad thing to think. Listen to me, church. It's a sad thing to think. I'm sitting here, and I'm standing here behind this pulpit, or you know, sitting where you at on a church pew, and I'm thinking of, uh, of the streets of gold. I'm thinking, of, oh my God, you know, the glories of heaven. I'm thinking that one day I'm going to walk, and I'm going to see the crystal sea. One day I'm going to walk up to the gates of pearl. Bless God. One day I'm going to enter. I'm going to stand at the gates of heaven and I'm going to enter there only to find at the end of my journey when I close my eyes all that I thought I was going to do and I wind up in a place called hell. Amen. I thought I was on my way to glory. I said the prayer. Hello? There will be many according to the Word of God. This is not something I've made up. This is not something I read in the book from some other author. The Scriptures plainly say that they're going to be church people. They're going to be those people that dedicated their life to God's service. They're going to be those people that sit in the pews on Sunday morning and Thursday night and Sunday evening, that thinking everything is okay, but when the time comes, they'll stand before God and Jesus will speak the words and depart. I never, and I don't, again I'll say, I don't understand why this is here. But most definitely it is. It's there. And it's a sad state. This just tells us how serious God is. You know, we may laugh it off at it. We may, we may shrug our shoulders and say the preacher's crazy. We may say this or say that. We may laugh at that one that, that's really doing all they can do, trying their best to bring that soul into the glory of God. We may look and judge another that's struggling. Amen. They just got saved. I know there's some in here that just give you heart to the Lord. You're fighting a battle. I know there's some in here that there's drugs and alcohol. You're fighting a battle. But bless God, you're going to fall. It's going to happen. Don't just lay there. Get up and keep on going. Get up and keep on moving. God ain't done with you. Amen. He'll bring you out. But we can't stand and judge somebody else by our own actions. I'm not to be compared to you and you're not to be compared to me. If you look at me and say, well, if he makes it to heaven, bless God, I ain't got no problem. You're in bad trouble. We're supposed to. We're supposed to compare ourselves, Tanya, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I compare myself to God, I find that I am the unclean of the unclean. I find out that there's no good thing in this flesh. I find out that I am sinful above sinful. When I compare myself to a holy and a righteous God, whom the Bible says I am to be and put on. When I compare myself to that, then I go, Lord, how short I have fallen. But we got a tendency to look at each other. We got a tendency, Amen, Sister Sheila, to look and say, "Well, if you make it, I see you fall. Mm -hmm. I heard you talking. Well, that's church. 
If they go into heaven, Sister Shirley, I ain't got no problem. Yes, you do. Yes, bless God, you do. Well, I ain't going to church for no hypocrite. I'm going to say it. I said it once. I'll say it again. I'd rather spend two hours in church service with a hypocrite than eternity in hell with them. Amen. I've been called a hypocrite. Been there, baby? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I have. But I'm forgiven. And I try to do better. Huh? There's a change supposed to come, church. What's sad is those that are sitting on church pews expecting to go to heaven. And they're saying this. They said they, they knew the Lord. Everything's in order. I've taken care of it all. It's okay. They said, I'm going to leave this world. And I'm going to heaven. But when they open their eyes on the other side, there is a great possibility they'll hear these words. I never knew you. Who are you? But Jesus, I was the one I said the third pew back. I was there every Sunday. Yeah. I was the one I give you out of my money. I paid my time. I give you to help support the child. I was there. I was the one that was sitting in the back pew. No, I didn't like you that brother preacher spit, so I didn't get up close, Jesus. Hey, man, come on. But I was there. And he'll say, Ethel, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. You must have tried to come another way. You must have kind of tried to come through another door. Or climb over as a thief and a robber. Because I don't know who you are. There'll be many. And how many men that died thinking of mansions and glory wound up in hell? I said, Preacher, that ain't right. How do you get that? Look at verse 13. Verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leads to destruction. And many, there you are again, many there be which go in there at. There's many again. <laughs> the problem, the problem is many who call Jesus Lord is trying to enter in at the wide gate. You know why we want to enter in at the wide gate? It's an easy route. The crowd wants to go in at the wide gate. It's wide enough so everybody can get through. And there's not much pushing and shoving. There's not much resistance. Hey, if I go through the wide gate, that means I can carry what I want to carry through. I don't have to put nothing down and try to work my way through. I can just carry all with me into the wide gate. Uh, that means that I can go in with uh, all the mess that I've been carrying around. Uh, that means I can go in with all the sin uh, that i got with me. I go in with the wide gate. Uh, that means that I can go in with all this stuff uh, that I've been carrying around. Uh, that I don't have to lay down pride and arrogance. And I don't have to lay down uh, no lying. Amen. I don't have to lay down no tongue talking. Uh, I can just walk through the wide gate. Uh, amen. Don't have to put nothing down. But the very next verse, Jesus says this, enter in at the straight gate. That's the gate that there. That's the way you got to go in. And tell you, if I go in at the straight gate, that means for me to fit through, I got to lay some stuff down. I got to get rid of some baggage. I can't just bring anything. The Bible says there'll be no sin. There'll be no unclean thing that enters into that city. A lot of people are going through the white gate, bless God, thinking they're carrying all this mess with them in the glory. And Jesus said it ain't happening. There's no sin coming there. There's no unclean thing going there. You can say you know me 
all you want to say you know me. But bless God, that don't mean I know you. Come on, church. If anything ever gets us to think about how we ought to live for God, this ought to do it. How I should be. How I should live. I don't know what happened to the old time way. I don't know. Somewhere over the years, Tanya, it just seemed to, 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 to disappear. Come on, come on. New theologies come in. Yeah. And people began to change and twist and turn. And now everything's all right. Come on, Brady. I can do what I will, but I've said a prayer. I can live like I want because I've said a prayer. And it wasn't always that way. There was a thing called consecration. Yeah. A thing called dedication. Come on. A thing called putting yourself in line with the Word of God. Amen. Yes. And living the way God said to live. Yes. Amen. Hello? If you'll read this verse or this, this chapter, you'll find that Jesus goes on to say this. He said, Blessed is the man, not the one that just hears the preacher preach. Not the one that just hears the Word of God. But blessed is the man that puts in the practice, that lives the way Amen. this Bible says to live. Amen. He'll be blessed. He'll be like a house that's built upon a rock. The winds will blow. Amen. The storm to come. But that house will stand. Amen. Hello? But the foolish will fall. Those that think that I can do whatever, live however, do whatever I want, and it's okay. That house is built upon sand. The Bible declares and the storm will come, the wind will blow, bless God, and that house will fall yep. come on. and stand before God Almighty. <coughs> I really didn't mean come on. Let's get to preach this long. The problem is many call Him Jesus Lord. You try to enter in at the wrong gate. I'm going to enter in wide gate. But I can just live the way I want to live. Talk the way I want to talk. Do the way I want to do. God said, that's not so. That's not right. God said, that's not going to happen. Hello? It's easy to go to the wide gate because a wide gate How many of you know you like to follow the crowd? I know a lot of people who say they were leaders. Come on. They followed the crowd. The crowd gets you in trouble. Yes. There are going to be many that enter the wide gate to destruction. Yes. But only a few. See, it's the only a few going to find that narrow gate. That place where we have to enter and we have to take off some stuff. We got to get rid of some stuff. We can't enter in with all that mess. But we start shedding. Why? Because it means more to enter into that gate than it does to follow that crowd. It means a whole lot more to enter into heaven than it does to do what I want to do. It means a whole lot more, Sister Becky. To to go to the portal of heaven and to, to, to please this old flesh and this old lust of life. It means more. Well, this thing's temporary. This old body's temporary, surely. One day it's going. But my home in heaven is eternal. My home in hell. Not to be that it should be there. It's eternal. You know, I believe that God wrote really up the dimensions of hell. And let us look in. I believe we'd see the rich man. I bet he's still crying today. Lord, give me one more chance. Give me one more chance. 
And there's many that's going to walk out of this building today, Brother Joe, that's getting an opportunity to make things right with God. And if they could hear Him cry, and He'd tell them, do it, do it today. Do it now. Don't wait. Do it right now before it's too late. You don't know what tomorrow has for you. I thought I had an eternity to live, but the next day I woke up in hell. I was in torment. Do it today. Today is the day of salvation. But we're not promised tomorrow. Listen to the church. There's a lot of people that don't want to lay down worldliness. They don't want to lay down their life. See, they don't want to lay that stuff down. God's word finally says you're not going to enter in with that in your life. It's not going to be there. It can't be there. Amen? It's an easy entrance. That's why I gave. If you follow the crowd, I'll say to you today you're on the wrong road. And that moves hard to make a detour on. Of yourself. Because when you turn of yourself, the crowds will run you over. They're going to trample you. If you're following the crowd, you better find an exit somewhere. Better get off that road. Find you an exit. And get on the road to heaven. Get on the Jesus Highway. Before it's too late. Before it's too late. Why gate is the interest that many choose. Amen. Christ said in verse 14, it's the narrow gate that we got to lay down. i got to end this thing. I didn't really want to preach this long this morning. I'm going to finish with this. And I hope you grab a hold of what I'm trying to say, what the Lord is trying to speak to us today. You know, for many of you, you don't know I'm telling you right now, you don't know, and I don't know what tomorrow's going to hold for me. I may come in, or you may come in tonight and they say, well, the preacher's dead. Right. You'll be shocked. Come on. Huh? Yeah. He's dead. Brother Hart Becky, she had to go and bury her brother. Last week she called me. Brother told me to come here many, many a time. And he just, it was just a blessing. And she called and she said, Tony's dead. I said, no. There ain't no way. That's the way. He was gone. That quick. That quick. Grab hold of what the Lord's trying to tell you today. I'm going to finish with this analogy and I hope that what God's trying to tell us will grab hold of it. I've used it one time before, but I'm using it again. Many of you know. You know President Bush. Hello? You know him. You've seen him. I know his mother and his father, George Herbert Walker Bush. Hello? And Barbara Pierce Bush. I know that he's got five brothers and sisters, but President Bush does not know me. Ethel, if I were to go up to the White House right now and I'd go before the guard and I'd say, listen, I know President Bush. And I do. I wouldn't be lying. I know him. I know President Bush and I want to go in I want to talk to him for just a minute. Well, they're going to call and they're going to get a hold of President Bush and they're going to say, well, there's a Keith Walker out here that says he knows you. And he wants to come in and speak with you. What do you want us to do? And they're going to say, he's going to say, well, I don't know him. He may know me, but I don't know him. And I didn't lie. I do know him. I do know his mom and daddy. I do know he's got brothers and sisters. But yet, he didn't know me. And because he didn't know me, I wasn't allowed to go in. And it's the same thing Jesus is telling you and me here today. Does he know who I am? Have I been to Him in prayer? Have I talked to Him on a daily basis? Have I went and read His Word and find out all that I can about this Savior that I'm supposed to have a personal relationship with? If I have not that day when I enter into judgment, that day when I stand before God, amen, I say, Jesus, I knew You. I was in Your church. I did this and I did that. There's a great possibility He'll say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. 
That's a sad thought. But it's the Word of God. I'm not the one saying it, Joe. God is. And what people don't realize is we're living in a day when the Lord has placed this generation, this generation, you're here for a reason. God had this whole thing designed from generation to generation to generation. And you've been put here for a reason. And I don't think we were put here to mandy bandy around and play around with God's Word and do what we want to do. I heard Joe say this this morning. I, it just struck me and I liked it. We don't need no more excuses. We need examples. Amen. We need somebody to stand up and say, listen, I'm going to live for God the way I'm supposed to live for God. And you do what you will. Come on. Amen. Lest one day one day, we hear those dreaded words. I couldn't enter the White House, even though I knew him. Why? Because he didn't know me. You're not going to enter heaven because you say you know him. You have to know that he knows you. And that comes from personal. Stand with me.